go ahead and turn it over to our council members, Ms. Allison Teresio of Richland County District 5 and Mr. Will Brennan of Columbia City Council District 3. Ms. Teresio? Hi, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Um, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, I was just remarking to Councilman Brennan sitting next to me that um, I'm having flashbacks to uh, years ago when we were both running. Uh, a long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, and now we get to sit by each other uh, and talk about the penny uh, from our respective seats on council. So uh, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for being interested in the penny. Uh, and thank you for your advocacy in your neighborhoods. I see a lot of folks who are very active in their neighborhood groups and I get to see regularly. Uh, and so we really, really do appreciate your input. Um, I just wanted to take a minute tonight and reflect back on kind of how we've gotten here. Part of the reason, part of what we're doing tonight is just educating the community about what has happened before and what if the voters uh, decide to move forward with a new penny this fall, what will happen in the future. So as many of you know, the first penny passed in 2012 uh, with a very specific list of projects uh, for the community. And since that time, uh, Richland County has been hard at work uh, putting, these, uh, putting these projects into place. Um, I think many of us uh, in District 5, uh, in your council district, three, three council district, city council district 3, um, have seen the improvements around our neighborhoods. Um, and we also, I know through neighborhood meetings and through your advocacy that there is, there is more that you desire. And so you'll see in some of these uh, materials that we have that some of the uh, projects uh, have public input listed by them. And so that is your advocacy reflected in your local government. Um, so I just wanted to start off by saying that and then I'll hand it over to Councilman Brennan. Absolutely, I tell you what, District 3 loves a good public forum. It's great to see everybody out. Um, a lot of familiar faces. Um, one thing we all have in common, we are all citizens of Richland County. And the Richland County Transportation Penny affects every corner of this county, every neighborhood, every community. Downtown neighborhoods, the wear and tear on our roads, our sidewalks, our infrastructure are just as great throughout uh, every community in this county. So I want to say thank you to Councilman Teresio and the wonderful the Penny staff at the county for, for coming out to Hand Middle School tonight to, to talk about our Penny. It is our Penny. It is affecting and helping our communities. We're going to take a look back and we're going to celebrate the successes and then we're going to take a look forward to celebrate what our penny can continue to do if the voters so wish it to. Um, local governments working together are, are great governments and it has been refreshing to work with Richland County as a municipal elected official in putting our desires, our wish list together for what we would like to see in the transportation penny for the municipal approach. Um, uh, highlights and, and uh, the director's gonna talk about the categories of county advancement, community investment, and of course our transit. Councilwoman Teresio and I both serve on the comment board and see the needs for that continued funding and the importance of what that means to the growth. Growth has hit Columbia, growth has hit Richland County, it has hit our state. And it's so important for us to continue our penny. So with that, um, I'm going to hand it over and look forward to answering questions for you. And, and just remember, I don't, I don't think we want to see a life without a penny, because that means uh, general budget funds would have to be raised, and we would lose a lot of quality of life issues that, that we desperately re need right now. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. Thank you, Mrs. Soricio. Uh, again, I'm going to give you one quick reminder again. Don't forget to put your contact information on this card. And once you have filled out the card, just wave it in the air and we'll have one of our staff members come grab it from you. Now I'm going to turn the program over to Richland County's Director of Transportation and Public Works, Mr. Mike Maloney. Thank you, Susan. It's a. Uh, it's a. Uh, all right, I, I'll just, just let, me, let me know if I get too close to the edge of this uh, race platform here. Not a regular You'll feel it. Like this, so. uh, 
thank you for coming out. Um, you're going to hear a little bit about uh, uh, the program and uh, a nice document that you received tonight that, that uh, boils down in the presentation you're about to see is Richland County's Roadmap to the Future. Um, you see some highlights in there for, uh, of that. Uh, we also have with us uh, Administrator Brown, reviewing this, not to mention Richland County Administrator, uh, Mr. Brown, and then we have our, our TPAC uh, Chairman, Mr. John Black. And the Mayor. I'll give a shout out later. Well, welcome to uh, Richland County's Roadmap to the Future. As uh, Alderman was saying, this, this began, and, and uh, as Tracy indicated too, that you know this began in 2012. We're, we're in the current penny. Uh, there were various goals, three main goals to the program: safety and quality of life, mobility and accessibility, uh, and economic development. Finally, neighborhoods and communities in Richland County. So the projects and the program for the comment were developed and funded with those in mind. So uh, the county council, knowing the penny, would reach its capacity in 2026. So we're here in uh, October of 2024, and in about two years, we'll reach the full collection achieving $1.07 billion of penny funds. And that uh, maximum amount for 22 years, whichever comes first, would mark the uh, completion of the program. And so we're coming to the dollar amount uh, limit first. And so that will occur in about 14 years from the date that it started collecting. And knowing that, Richland County Council asked us to provide an analytics uh, of the current pennies impact, and then also to assess future infrastructure needs beyond the penny that we have. Because a lot has changed since the studies that occurred in 20, 2008 and updates in 2010 and 2011. Some of the impacts that engineers would talk about are numbers. Uh, we've created or completed 120 miles of roadway resurfacing, over 500 miles of projects, or excuse me, 500 projects, and then uh, paving of 85 uh, dirt roads and completing the projects on 11 intersections. Uh, the Penny has 12 intersections, 11 have been completed through construction. Clemson Sparkleberry is our last project in that area. But I, I had a, a, a supervisor of mine always ask, so what? So you did those things, but what did they do for the community? What did they do for the greater good? Well, the penny can't claim that because of the growth we all know happened and everything, you know, full responsibility for all these good things, but these are things that happened since 2012 till now, in the last uh, decade and two years. 20,000 new jobs in Richland County, 4,000 new businesses, and over 4.7 billion in new uh, infrastructure investments of new buildings and businesses being developed. Now the Penny can claim this, uh, for a $24 million investment to extend Shock Road into the Pine View Industrial Park, uh, there's 1.1 billion in new direct investments that occurred because of that $24 million investment. Uh, Richland County's also seen since 2012 a 60% reduction in unemployment. And last but certainly not least, 2.5 million new annual visitors. And so with that and that grow, economic growth, uh, you can see why we, we achieved the uh, dollar amount before the time because of the growth. So we look at some of the positive impacts, including accessibility. Um, in 2012, uh, the significant headway in, in supporting uh, those South Carolinians who have disabilities 
such as dial ride from the Comet, the DART program for curved to curved wheelchair pickup, Comet bus shelters that follow ADA guidelines, uh, accessible sidewalks and improvements have gone in, and better connectivity of per for uh, personal mobility, especially for people who have disabilities who either can't drive or choose not to. Other things included intersection improvements, and one of the early projects that was completed in the Penny were accessibility improvements, ADA guidelines, improving intersections with truncated domes and marked crosswalks of, uh, so drivers and vehicles can see where the pedestrians should be crossed. Other roadway improvements included at Veterans Road, providing notable improved access to the VA hospital, and then on North Main Street, uh, the project uh, completed just uh, in the last year, year and a half, and provided improved intersections with imprinted crosswalks and lighted crosswalks so that uh, there was more visibility for pedestrians in that uh, redevelopment area that's going on and, and clearly improving. The comet itself uh, increased miles traveled by 41%. They created 29 new routes, and now there are 160 new uh, bus shelters and 196 uh, benches at bus stops. In 2012, there were 16 benches only and no shelters. So all that has been uh, projects the Comet has achieved using the Penny. They've added 29 new buses and the all important ridership has increased by 35% from 1.4 million riders in 2012 to 1.9 million in 2023 and they've received just like Richland County multiple recognitions for exemplary management of public funds so what's next so we completed the needs assessment that was a project in the penny that the council said it's time to do this at the maturity of the current penny so look out and find out what's changed in the community since those early studies and development of projects back uh, that, that were implemented in 2012. We reached out to uh, groups and organizations and citizens vested in the community. These are some of the uh, other governments and uh, professionals that were involved, like SCDOT, uh, KC, City of Columbia, Central Midlands uh, Council of Governments and their Metropolitan Planning Organization that tracks major projects and studies in the area. Blythewood, East Dover, Irmo, the USC, University of South Carolina, um, Briarwood, Columbia Chamber, uh, Rotaries, and uh, several neighborhood groups. In addition, we have 11 council districts in Richland County, and we went on the road to show them what projects have been planned by those groups in their area and throughout the county and then to take the, their input on needs that they've seen with the changes that have occurred over the last decade. Simultaneously, uh, the, the, the county developed a principles uh, document to transparently and analytically determine the future uh, funding priorities. Now that principles document is very important and it was completed by Richmond County as a resolution. It provides for principles instead of politics. It fairly and accurately determines prioritization for projects. Um, the, we're committed to finishing the projects identified by the 2012 Penny Project with the highest priority. Back in 2018, 2019, 2020, there were a lot of reviews of the penny and what can we afford to get done and some projects were de-scoped or removed from the scope of the penny to complete because of funding inability to fund so those projects are the first thing richland county council said get those done in the new penny first uh, value of about 120 million dollars in today's uh, uh, dollars as, as the estimates show and those would be completed before any other projects launch there's six uh, project principles which will be applied to create a project score and then projects with higher score would be prioritized over other projects in the same category. So sidewalks versus sidewalks, 
intersections versus intersections, road widenings, greenways, just looking at those to each other. The six principles, and here's the first three. So if a project has additional funding, say we, uh, for example, uh, the North Main uh, Street project, which we talked about a little earlier, that had a $20 million grant from the federal government included in it. Projects like that that can achieve uh, uh, an outside funding, saving uh, the penny, uh, would receive additional points into their score. Overall impact and cost ratio, how many people are we positively impacting with the project compared to another project? And then safety, the most points are going to that, 25 points, the positive effect the project would have on improving public safety. And then the, the final three, improving overall condition, the effect the project would have on a blighted condition. Will this project help improve and bring an area up? Economic development, the project that, uh, will the project have an in, uh, input on helping sustain or create new jobs? And then finally, public support, the input of the public and other stakeholders. You're doing a project in the Blythewood area, would it help? Is Blythewood supportive of that? Are, are there other groups supportive of it? If you're doing a project in the city of Columbia, the city of Columbia and their staff and their elected officials supportive of it, those would all be things that go into uh, public support as well as taking input from the public. Transportation uh, penny in the future uh, is estimated to achieve or raise $4.5 billion over a 25 year period. This includes three categories. Community investment projects, county advancement projects, and common enhancement projects. And I think the, the photos on the right are intended to give you a kind of a, a visual. So looking at Three Rivers Greenway, that would be a type of community investment project. Looking at county advancement projects, like a major road widening, and looking at common enhancement projects, like the shelter and bus stops. The community investment projects, uh, overwhelmingly, 48% of the funding, that is the largest uh, county council had put into that. Um, that addresses uh, integrity, uh, safety, reliability, and sustainability in local communities, things that affect you positively on your day-to-day -day commute or walk, uh, may include projects like getting the roads up to condition, uh, in rebuilding the road that you have, making the intersections safer, making the intersections more efficient, bikeways, greenways, sidewalks, and those types of projects that would be very important to people uh, in their community. County investment, 30% of the funding, uh, that's target the expansion of the transportation infrastructure, support and sustain economic growth on a countywide basis. So major transportation corridors in the county uh, may include new construction, major roadway uh, intersection improvements, and community corridors. Common enhancement at 22% for the ongoing support for the next 25 years for operations and expansion of the comet, which could include um, operational sustainability, new routes, new construction, rider safety and comfort, and new buses and modes of, of transportation. And over 25 years, those things can certainly change. What's also key to the, the, the new penny, um, county council put an area, approved an area to be for emerging needs. What don't we know now that we will find out because of an opportunity that comes along. So providing for flexibility in evolving projects and opportunities over the next 25 years. Um, how that will be, uh, emerging needs will be identified and tracked as county council will work with the Transportation Penny Advisory Committee, that is our Citizen Oversight Committee, to establish a protocol for addressing future projects. Once the emerging needs are established, the Transportation Department will it sign and score those just like the other projects. And then remain as nimble 
uh, as needs arise. So it's just meant to be there uh, without naming a project now. We don't know what it could be in the future, and that is in that budget. So transparency. So the penny will be administered by the Lutheran County Transportation Department. It will continue to have that citizen oversight uh, group that I mentioned, the Transportation Program Advisory Committee. And that is a group of citizens. Uh, if, if a person was interested in that, they would put their name into the uh, Richland County Council, uh, and the council would uh, review that and approve that. Um, there is representation from the geography of the county. So we have spots available in all of each town and city um, and from the unincorporated areas. And then that group, the, our, our group, the Transportation Penny, will continue to use the data-driven information to prioritize projects. And I mentioned those scores and the six principles. And if you go to our county website, richlandpenny.com, you can look up our, our, our document and actually see how it breaks down into those categories. Uh, how having a, a crosswalk in an intersection, uh, for instance, or an island of refuge uh, in an intersection, how those will add points to the project to deliver uh, more points. The Transportation Department and the Transportation Program Advisory Committee are responsible for transparently managing projects using the proceeds from the transportation penny. And the TPAC will hold regular meetings. Currently, they're meeting every month. And every month, we're providing them updates for the expenses that occurred over the month and that uh, the project progress that occurred. Uh, the the tr Transportation uh, uh, Program Advisory Committee may be asked to provide input on specific needs uh, and scoring, and the tr their input will, will be shared with uh, a county council committee called the Transportation Ad Hoc Committee. And so when we have something that needs to be approved, it will go to the Transportation Ad Hoc Committee and then ultimately county council. Um, they'll continue to take an, an active role for the emerging needs, as we said before, and in co cooperation with County Council and our ad hoc committee, uh, the TPAC will conduct an annual state of the penny to keep citizens informed. And we all participated in one this past November. Uh, we'll likely uh, have one a little bit later this year, but we'll be doing that again. Here's four facts. The transportation penny will be on the ballot in a few weeks. The transportation penny is not an additional or new tax. The penny is an extension of the existing penny, which expires in 2026. And then additional infrastructure and, and transportation projects will begin sometime after that, so once it's approved, and once the original penny expires. So these are the ballot questions, and there's two of them. The first one is, I approve a special sales and use tax in the amount of 1% to be imposed in Richland County for not more than 25 years to fund certain projects with an aggregate cost of not exceeding $4.5 billion. Collection of the special sales and use tax will not begin until the current special sales and use tax imposed by Richland County is terminated. In other words, the current penny completes its, its uh, income and revenue, and then this new penny would be able to be started. A vote yes agrees with that, and a vote no says I do not want that. So those are the, it's a straight up question, just like question two. I approve of the issuance of not exceeding 950 million of general obligation bonds of Richland County. Payable from the special sales and use tax described in question one, the, penny, the new penny. Maturing over a period not to exceed 25 years, save life of the penny, to fund projects from among the categories described in question one above. So this is uh, borrowing ahead to get more projects started. Uh, as I mentioned, the uh, 
the 2012 projects that would be completed have a value of about 120 million with 950 million or some, some number under that, the penny would be able to start a lot of other projects as well. And again, there's our, our website and code for you to put that into your phone if you need to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Director Maloney. Yes, um, richlandpenny.com. Can't say it enough, but that really is your hub for all things penny. Even you can go there and um, you can see the presentation that Director Maloney just gave. Um, you can download the brochure that uh, is on the table out there. You can also, as Director Maloney mentioned, the Transportation Penny Advisory Committee, as well as the Transportation Ad Hoc Committee meetings. Those are all um, archived on that website. So again, your hub for all things penny related. Um, at this time, I'm going to collect questions. Um, if, our, if you have questions, um, if you could hold those up and our staff members will come around and grab those to you. While I'm getting those, I do want to recognize Richland County Council Chairwoman Jessica Mackey who is in attendance tonight. Thank you, Ms. Mackey, for being with us. Oh, Mayor Rickman, I am, oh, <laughs> I am so sorry. I must have overlooked you. My apologies. Welcome. Thank you. This evening, we are taking questions. However, um, we will have some time, most likely at the end, if you have a comment or a question that you would like to speak with someone directly, we will have time at the end for that. Right. And don't forget to write your contact information on these cards, just in case. Another thing that we like to do, and of course, we've only had uh, one other um, transportation penny town hall at this point, but we are um, going to be again answering these questions and adding them to our FAQ um, section of our website. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you, Clerk Rillo. All right. Um, I'll just keep taking them as they come. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, excuse me. First question. If the penny does not pass, how will Comet and Road Improvements be funded? The floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I'll, I'll just start and say, um, if the penny doesn't pass in uh, 2014, uh, then the penny will continue to be collected through its, uh, through its lifespan, so there will not be an immediate uh, impact on, on common service. Uh, that will hopefully give uh, council, the county, uh, some time to, uh, to determine what next course of action might need to be taken. Uh, in terms of funding, a funding source for the comet. Uh, we do know that our constituents are, uh, are very uh, happy with the comet service, and so we do not want that to go away. We don't want it to, uh, we don't want to go back to the days before we were funding the comet uh, in this way. And so we want to ensure that we can fully fund the comet um, at its current service, um, but that, that is generally what we would have to do. We'd have to look at another funding source uh, for Comet. Um, I think as far as other transportation projects would go, we would again have to look at other funding sources because we do have great needs in the county. Um, while state and federal funds are helpful in our projects and our uh, transportation projects, um, it's not nearly enough to cover the needs that we have um, because 
we, we have a lot of investment to do in this community, um, and we know that we are growing and we have needs to meet. So who remem remembers the bus system when SC and G ran it? Right? Okay. All right, that's what it's gonna look like in about 2029. The Comet's got some funds laid away to last a couple more years after 2026. Okay. Routes will be cut. Uh, connectivity to our large employers, to our hospitals, we're gonna suffer a lot. We will have to go find, f find funds and other buckets of money. Those, those pools of money, you know what those are? Those are going to have to be general funds. If it's the county, if it's the city, if it's pursuing federal grants, um, it's going to be a tough pull. A lot of these grants that the, that the uh, transit system would have to rely on are competitive. You're competing against everybody in this state and in this country for limited funding. When it comes to uh, keeping up with our local roads, I think that was the second part. That, that again, that, that's a general fund bump that would have to happen. Uh, currently, the city of Columbia has a carry along of about a half million dollars for paving projects every year, and that doesn't get much done. So we rely on this future penny to really amp up that 10-year paving plan and really uh, get into the priority uh, streets in our city. We have 30% of the roads within our municipality boundaries are owned by the city. Um, we have a, a very generous, aggressive paving plan that is in this ask for our future penny to take care of all these roads. Roads are our number one complaint, everybody. So we need to keep up and we need to, we need to, we need to do it ourselves because DOT, you know what DOT is doing out there? <laughs> Big projects. They're not taking care of our secondary roads, our roads and our sidewalks. And neighborhood roads, yes. Uh, and I, I'll just mention that I see several neighborhood folks um, and We've seen some improvement in paving through some of our neighborhoods, um, but we have a long way to go before we get every, everybody covered. And not to mention, if we, if we did not pass the penny, we would miss out on a lot of the opportunities. Uh, Councilman Brennan mentioned sidewalks, but we're also talking about bike paths and greenways that would just sit undone uh, until some funding source came along. Thank you. And before we get to our next question, I do want to mention um, that there is a public hearing next Tuesday at 3.30 at 2020 Hampton Street. It's from 3.30 to 5. Um, if you would like to speak for or against the penny, that will be in the council chambers in front of county council. Thank you. All right. Where can we view where can we view the roads that are going to be repaved? If I don't see the road on the list, who do I contact to inquire? Uh, was that the roads that are going to be repaved? To be repaved, yes. The so the current penny had forty million dollars set aside to repave roads and that covers part of Richland County uh, in the current penny and did not cover the city. The city had some major projects in there but did not have that in the new penny. There's a, a, a budget set for 690 million to cover the city and the county and that's all the roads. So all the roads are on the list to be completed with that budget. I think this gets back to your point that you made about the TPAC Advisory Committee and the priority um, grading. The City of Columbia presented our, our, uh, our 10 year plan and that, that really prioritizes the worst uh, streets to the streets that have just recently been paved. Um, that is a line item, I, I believe in the ordinance, um, of that total number. So any of those roads that come forward from our City of Columbia list, and it's long, will go through the TPAC. So they can check that box that it truly is a priority transportation uh, need. Uh, can we maybe also speak to the uh, the category of emerging needs? And uh, perhaps maybe uh, there may be uh, a road that might fall into an emerging need. Is that the case? Uh, it, it's possible. It's it's you know not for me to say how that would be used at this time, but I do know that. Uh, going from 40, 40 million to 690 million, you know, between the two, and the fact that 
Council up, took community investment up to 48% of the program, where it was you know, five or 10% in that area. That was the single largest change to take care of the things that we do have. And so I think they're all gonna be taken care of in there. Um, but it, it, it would be something for uh, TPAC and, and really a, a something to come up to actually get into the particular emerging need, I would think. I'd like to make one other point, though, that the balance of all the roads within the municipality that fall under the DOT, uh, there is a number in there as well. I believe it's 140 million that we're going to use uh, to leverage DOT grants to move those projects uh, further along quicker. So that's a big component that we, we need to not uh, sleep on is the fact that we're going to have money that we can leverage with outside state and federal grants if our, our penny passes. I don't think there's anybody from DOT here, but uh, I do know from our conversations with them that they love to see when local investment shows up, uh, then all of a sudden they seem to be- much Matching better. fund projects go to the yes, top of the list. They, absolutely. They absolutely do. What are your plans for Northeast Columbia? What are some of the projects that we have completed in the area already? Jessica, want to take the mic there? Miss <laughs> <laughs> Maggie, that's your. Please. That's your there's a, uh, there's nothing up here. <laughs> hey, uh, directed to me because I represent uh, Northeast Columbia Council. Uh, currently, with the current pay, many folks know about Clemson Road widening. We had a few dirt roads we paved in Northeast. I think the project that you hear the most about is Hardstrap Road. That's been going on for a while in the Northeast. That is a project that's funded by the current penny, but is managed by SCDOT. Yes, thank you, Mr. T. Patrick. Partially funded uh, and managed. And so by SCDOT. Uh, that project they have are uh, steady working on. They've completed and opened portions of that and they're continuing to work on the rest. Uh, there's also been roads. Uh, widen out in Blythewood and then continuing to work on those as well. In the transportation needs assessment list that is provided in the proposed uh, penny, there are um, every district represented and there are many projects listed in Northeast as well when we look at Sears Street Church Road or Two Notch, I believe Rhino Pond Road is one, Langford Road. So there's many other travel roads when we look at the new subdivision in York and Northeast that folks are traveling to get to the interstate, to get downtown, um, to get to work. Those are the ones that we're seeing listed on here that need improvements and hoping that, you know, we can work on that along with sidewalks in the Northeast as well to help with the additional uh, folks that are coming out there. Thank you, Ms. Mackey. If the penny doesn't pass, how will potholes be filled the common be supported, et cetera. So I think we kind of touched, touched upon the common. Um, one of the things I was just thinking about, so maybe I'll add in here, is that not only have, we have folks come to rely on the common for their transit to work and transit to uh, doctor's offices and those kinds of things, but folks have come to rely on DART, so the dialer ride transit. Um, and we, we want to make sure that the folks who have been using that service would continue to be able to use that service. So again, that, I feel like that uh, question is very similar to the other question about how things, uh, how we would fund the comment and how we would take care of roads. And you know, like Councilman Brennan said, we do have public works budgets. Um, but they are not anywhere near the level of magnitude that this penny would allow us to, to uh, utilize to take care of roads. Yeah, I, I, the last thing we want to do is a millage rate uh, hike, and that's, that's uh, one alternative that would have to be considered. So uh, that's, uh, again, that's the last thing we want to do. Can you speak to the process that you'll have in place to ensure transparency and good management of the funds and projects? Um, I'll just say that I'm, I'm really proud of the votes that council took uh, back in, I think it was 2019, uh, to bring the penny 
in-house so that uh, council and uh, staff had much more direct oversight of those projects and then continue to work with our, um, our contractors uh, to get those projects done. And so that is, um, that is something that we intend to continue. So we will continue having the projects uh, uh, overseen by our uh, in-house transportation staff. Um, and one of the things that I, I hope that we continue to do is expand our expertise on staff to ensure that we have uh, the projects uh, like our greenways and bike paths are, um, are overseen in a way that is, that is suitable to those kinds of projects too. Yes, ma'am? Just to add to that, uh, up on the, on the screen, you see richandpenny.com, which is an initiative that County Council was in support of and pushed to have because of the concerns we heard related to transparency. So richandpenny.com is the true repository for all information related to the current penny and the past, this new penny. Everything goes up there. You will have updates on where we are on projects, projects completed, when they're scheduled to go next. You'll see minutes from TPAC meetings. You'll see videos where we have live and recorded meetings are on there as well. So it's all in one place and it's updated every month in addition to your sending out monthly newsletter. So even if you forget to go to the website, if you sign up, you get a monthly newsletter regarding what's going on with the pay project. Our transportation advisory committee, our TPAC, is now full. We had a lot of vacancies on that. We went out and made an effort to make sure we had representatives from every municipality in Richmond County now, and they are a part of this process when we talk about prioritizing and looking at projects. We are involving the community and having their engagement on the front end, which also increases transparency so everyone knows what we're doing, when we're doing it, and how we're doing it. And that has been a true commitment of this kind of council. So the website, in addition to TPAC, and bringing the penny in-house, all things that we're doing to improve transparency. And we are still open to ideas or suggestions that there's more that needs to be done, but that is a commitment of this council. And can I take a moment and just compliment um, our Director of Communications um, and, and her staff uh, on the efforts that have been made to ensure that we meet constituents where they are, and these days a lot of that is social media. So you'll see much more content um, coming out through our social media channels, so that even again, if you're not thinking about typing in richlandpenny.com, or maybe you didn't check your email, uh, or it went to spam or something, if you're on your social media platforms, you're gonna see updates uh, coming through to, to remind you that we're what we're doing out in the community. Thank you, Mr. Ratio, and I will say we have all the platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Not what am I missing? Next door. We're not on TikTok. We are not on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Our city and county is in need of more walkable, livable places. How can we be sure this penny actually gets more greenways, safer streets, and more of this work is seen as a priority? I, why don't you start? Okay. And I'll finish. Uh, I don't know who submitted that question, uh, but I know that uh, a lot of as I'm, I'm going to neighborhood meetings, that is the, that is the question that comes up so much. Uh, when I go to neighborhoods, they're not asking me how they can make their road wider. They're asking me how they can more safely cross the street. They're asking me how they can more safely bike and run in their neighborhood. Um, they're asking me those kinds of things. So. Um, those are really high priority uh, for me as a council member. I know that they are high priority in the public input part of our, uh, our project list, and that is something we will continue to, um, to advocate for um, and ensure get, uh, get built because it's, it's one of the number one things that these districts downtown particularly want to see. Absolutely. The city prioritized um, safety and uh, uh, pedestrian and biking. Uh, you can see those in the, uh, the, is it the ordinance or resolution that was, that was passed? The, the resolution. The resolution. Uh, specifically, 
um, funding to finish our quiet zones, the railroad safety crossings in downtown, um, various bikeway projects, um, for example, um, uh, Garner's Ferry shared use path uh, from Hazelwood to Devine. We understand that uh, our, our downtown roads can seem like highways sometimes. And so that's very important for us to balance that. Now that's in the community investment projects. Now some of the bigger um, transformative projects under county advancement that lie within the city, of course, is, is a matching fund of $25 million to go towards our assembly street separation project, that assembly rail project. Um, that has been a thorn in a lot of folks' side for a long, long time. Um, it will open up more accessibility to our downtown neighborhoods, uh, safer uh, pedestrian and biking uh, pathways and crossings. So I encourage you to go look at the list. Um, assembly Street, uh, phase three from Elmwood all the way to the State House, Divine Street, Garner's Ferry. But the biggest one is $95 million for Greenway expansion projects. That is to finish our beautiful Greenway system here. Uh, one project that has not been talked about that is right here in District 3 that the Penny funded and we broke ground on about a month ago was the Williams Street infrastructure project. That's opening up the heart of our city between Gervais and Blossom Street on the Congaree River. Uh, that is an expansion, a continuation of the world-class Green Street Bridge that was also funded by the Penny. So, so we're opening up uh, portions of our city and our county that otherwise have been untapped for recreation, for economic development, for hospitality, for visitors. And I want to make the one point. Over 40% of the funding for our penny comes from people that do not live in our county. They're either passing through or they're coming and they're realizing that Richland County and City of Columbia is a great destination to come visit. So keep that in mind. For over 40% of the funds that come in from the penny are paid by people from out of this county. So that's, that's, a, that's a good reason to keep it going. I'll also just say that um, it really does my heart good when I'm reading through a, a, a briefing document and I see the words complete streets coming from staff. So you know that you're being heard um, and you know that our staff are really up to, um, are really putting in place best practices because they're, uh, they're talking about complete streets, they're talking about protected bike paths and those sorts of things. So um, it's not just about you know, putting a stripe down the road and calling it a bike path. It really is um, the way that we're thinking about uh, these projects to at the panel. I think we partly answer this next question is twofold, but I don't think it hurts to reiterate. Is it true that without the penny, the projects that have been constructed with the 2012 penny would not have been funded? And is it also true that without the 2024 penny, there is no alternative funding to build projects? Well, I would say that the first question, the 2012 penny money, we, if, if those folks, I wasn't, I wasn't here in 2012, and many of us maybe weren't, um, but those projects either would not have gotten funded or there would have, or, or the council that was in place at that time would have perhaps sought a different funding source. And if this, if this penny does not pass, then either we won't, we won't build things or we would have to seek an alternative funding source. Yeah, just uh, our, our transit system, the comment would still be the same comment that it was in the late 2000s. Uh, Richland County uh, Public Works, for instance, on road resurfacing would be able to uh, resurface, you know, one to two roads a year. Um, so that instead of being uh, 500 projects and, you know, 120 miles of resurfacing would be something more like, you know, a few miles, five miles of resurfacing. So quite a bit less. And the roads only last so long, so 30 roads, 30 years in a road, and you get to 40 years, you're starting to see a lot of uh, missing asphalt, and that continues to degrade. So uh, we have a very simple formula that we have to achieve just with what Richland County has for paved roads, and that would require us to be doing something pretty major, resurfacing the roads in, uh, the, in the number of 20 to 30 miles per year, and certainly, uh, one to two million dollars would cover uh, about a 
up to about a fifth of that amount of money needed. And that's just for keeping up what we have. I just want to add that just I think really make sure we're painting the big picture here that if the pain the new proposed committee is not passed and we go to look at other funding sources, the reason that County Council supported this solution to bring to voters for those is because there is by state law a cap in which every year you could raise property taxes. Mm -hmm. So even if we went back to the draw board and even did raise property taxes, we wouldn't be able to collect enough revenue to even still complete not even half of the projects on the list. Because there are so many and the need is so great, even with a tax increase, we would not be able to collect enough. And so when we say look at other funding sources, there are other options, but there are no other options that will allow us to collect the amount of money needed to meet the transportation needs that have been identified. Has the pivot considered having a pool of funds to tackle quick, easy projects like repainting crosswalks and making ADA compliant curbs? Um, the the transportation penny is for major capital projects. So um, if it was something countywide that we could could do, we would look at that. But you know, as far as regular routine maintenance uh, of projects like that, and certainly pavement markings would fall into that category, filling potholes falls into that category. And I just wanted to add to that because it was asked before. We have other funding sources for those items, and they are you know at their maximum of what we can use those for and there's you know as far as taking care of the the roads with minor improvements that is already occurring um, and that is outside the penny so the penny wouldn't cover those types of things thank you and can i give a compliment to our ombudsman's department uh, so i know that several of you all are familiar with the ombudsman at uh, richland county um, several of you are very adept at taking photos and sending them in um, and getting things done that way, uh, please do continue to do that. If you see a pothole, uh, please take a photo um, and you can send it right into the Ombudsman's office. Uh, if you copy me, uh, teratio.allison at richlandcountysc.gov, uh, then I will try to uh, track that for you and circle back to it if there's not. Uh, She'll send it to me if it's in the city limits. Okay. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, and, and the wonderful thing about the ombudsman is that if you send it to the city and it's really a county project, they communicate with each other. If you send it to the county and it's a city project, they communicate with each other, um, similarly with DOT. So we're all copied on many of these emails, um, and so we, we will address those issues. And I do want to mention, if you did not catch that email address, it is located at the bottom of your agenda along with Mr. Brennan's contact information. So keep that handy. What are the city and county's priority projects for the Columbia's Mill District? Does the TPAC have, have at-large positions? Um, you want to do the TPAC uh, question first? I, I don't know the, the openings you think. We do have. Yes, and how many? And you so so we do have the chair of our TPAC committee in attendance, Mr. Black. Would you like to answer that question? So each entity within the county has designated has a designated number of representatives. So like East Over has one, uh, Richmond County has seven, the city of Columbia has three, which I'm one of. And we've got Eastover, Blythewood, Arcadia Lakes, Irmo, and Port Sickers. So there is, it, there is representatives from all municipalities, whether incorporated or unincorporated, from within the county. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you answered that so much more clearly than I would have uh, stumbled around to. 
Uh, so that's the answer about TPAC. And then we had a question for the, the Mill District. Um, you can look through the project list. It's probably the easiest thing to do. The Mill District is districts uh, five and 10. Yeah, so um, just scan through there and, and you can see. And, and that information is on the website under the Transportation Roadmap. Happy to show you how to get there after the meeting if you like. Because there is a lot of there there is a lot of information on that website. So just just let me know. We can certainly walk you through that. I marked on here uh, Olympia Avenue and Bluff Road. Um, so they're they're definitely here. I just have to Olympia Hayward and Wayne. Is a DOT project. And that, that is downloadable at the penny yeah. or some penny.com. It's a great it's a great site. It is small print. Okay. Within the city, however, um, what projects? Well I think the biggest one by is the assembly rail separation project and and um, just the overall infrastructure that comes down Whaley and up Whaley. Um, that is that is a major thoroughfare that you combine that with, I think we're going to hear about if, if the ballpark is going to be developed in the next 60 days, all the stormwater infrastructure and greenway that comes with that, combined with what they want to do with the assembly rail project, is really going to um, slow down those cars coming through your neighborhood. So, so I knew RFP's been uh, out. It is. It's out now, and it's due October 30th. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Our region. Our region was designated by Smart Growth America's Dangerous by Design Report as the 12th most dangerous place for pedestrians in the country. What will the penny do to address this? Thank you. Yes, we mentioned quite a bit that there are uh, uh, cross crosswalk improvements uh, and other improvements to, to really slow folks down. I think one of the things that we have seen the uh, what has happened with American roadways um, over the course of the past several decades is that we have uh, developed you know uh, neighborhoods that are far from work and far from our places where we shop, and so therefore we prioritize getting people from those neighborhoods in a really fast way to uh, wherever they work and shop. Um, and then they don't expect folks to be on the road at all, and this is where we had so much, uh, so many of those accidents. Uh, so I believe that our staff and this council understands that in, we need to be able to, yes, get you from place to place quickly, but then slow you down when you get to places where people are going to be walking around. Uh, so those intersection, crosswalk improvements, uh, sidewalk improvements, bike lane improvements, uh, all of those are things that you will see heavily represented in this list of projects. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, safer sidewalks. As, as private investment continues to roll in to Columbia, working with those private developers to, to pay for the infrastructure of sidewalks is something that the city takes very seriously. Um, so that, that is a, a path forward for uh, any projects that are not on the list. Um, I guess, you know, traffic enforcement's a whole nother public forum we could probably have. So, uh, but no, really, really working with um, the Sheriff's Department, uh, Chief Holbrook, on, on general uh, traffic enforcement uh, new directions, I think is something, I, I get an email every other day that, that says uh, the drivers in our downtown streets are, are getting worse. Mm -hmm. So it's very important as we grow, our enforcement and our education for downtown drivers keeps up. Maybe we'll do that form in, in February. It was, it was really positive in the needs assessment that was uh, garnering information from the public that we have over 50 intersection improvement projects in there because of the public's input, whereas the current penny has 12 projects uh, for intersection improvements showing you know that that is a need it is a desire of the public and uh, it, it's reflective in the in the uh, program what will happen to our roads if this is not passed can you give examples of future problems well 
so my husband grew up here, right here in the neighborhood on Duncan Street, and um, back in the 80s, one of the things that he was told was that uh, South Carolina was number one in roads, right? And we had these well-maintained, um, up-to-date roads. We have seen what happens when we do not invest in our infrastructure. Things crumble, the potholes come, uh, the sides wear away, uh, the roads are too narrow, um, all of these things happen. If we do not continue to invest in our infrastructure, it will wear away and we will see exactly what we've been seeing. Uh, we're starting to see some improvements now from the last penny, but I would say in the early 2010s, uh, think about what your roots were like and um, I, for one, really appreciate a smooth road and get lowers my blood pressure and makes me a happier person. I think the continued uh, paving band-aid that uh, we see now on a lot of roads would continue. Mm -hmm. um, you, you thought being on a, a city street repaving list takes a long time. Just imagine if you're on a DOT repaving list for your, for your local road. Again, it, it gets back to uh, us shouldering our own infrastructure, taking care of ourselves when it comes to that. Um, so I, I, I think Again, the last thing anybody wants to do is bump, uh, bump and millage to take care of uh, the infrastructure that, that, that is catching up to us from the growth. Yeah, I, think, I think the steel plates and the potholes are a public safety issue, even if it just helps calm us all down and make us a little happier as we move through the world. South Kilbourne has requested for sidewalks on Beltline connecting to shop. If it would be approved, how long, approximately, would constituents have to wait for this to happen? If it's currently not on the list, um, it would not. It would. It would be kind of an emerging need. Now, um, there are other funds for sidewalks. So, do we want to talk about CTC money? Yes. Uh, yes Ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there is a, a fund that we use, which is a, a part of the gas tax in the City of Columbia, Richland County, the Department of Transportation are all eligible to get into the CTC. Now that's about seven to eight million a year. And so that we've used for uh, sidewalks and other <coughs> needs that come up. And so, you know, if you kind of look at a percentage of it, Richland County, maybe, you know, get a couple million from there a year. Uh, and we have, they have been uh, uh, working on a lot of sidewalks. That actually rings a bell and we will follow up with that particular sidewalk because I know DOT is working on one out there. Um, but that, that is one of the funding sources we have and has, uh, you know, is highly competitive when you have a lot of needs like that. But we have uh, the uh, DOT and the CTC uh, have uh, completed quite a few important projects uh, that are in that, you know, one to two million dollar range. How many projects in the needs assessment can the 4.5 billion pay for? How many, how many projects in the needs assessment can the 4.5 billion pay for? Uh, so according to the calculations, in the neighborhood of 60% of the projects in there? 60%? Yes. And then we would hope to leverage some federal and state funds. And, and that is important, and that is why that, yeah, that's one of the principles uh, uh, categories, is if you can get outside funds to help extend the program, uh, that would be the project that would help, you know, would be elevated. The current penny at about seven hundred and seven hundred uh, million dollars for greenways and roadways has received about thirty-six million dollars in grants. So that's over five percent, and so that's you know that's literally ext extended what we were able to do, and so we would continue to look for that in the in the future. Just to point out the record, the 4.5 billion, not all of it, it goes to transportation. 
fish pocket. So remember, a portion of it goes to fund the economy. So you take the 4.5 billion and 22% of that is going towards comment. And then the remainder would be for transportation options. And, and we did touch on this next question a bit earlier, but I think it would be good to go over again. Is it true that over 40% of the penny funds expected to be collected under the 2024 penny if passed will be contributed by our visitors to the Midlands, or about 1.8 million? So we can kind of go over those figures again and talk about what that means as far as impact. Um, I believe the, the past trend will continue um, of you know, folks visiting Columbia and Richland County. Um, we may even see that increase uh, with folks coming in uh, and sending their dollars here. And so that would make an incredible impact. So, you know, when my family comes here to visit, when my friends come here to spend the night, when we go out to eat together, um, when we go shopping, all of those things are going to be contributing uh, to our penny collections. Yeah, I think the figure in, in, in the presentation is over 16 million visitors a year. Mm -hmm. um, so open up your wallets, uh, help us locally. How might the penny tax support public transportation, which in turn supports and assists residents to access valuable resources from, from organizations like the Richland County Library? Uh, we love the library. Uh, yes, so we want to make sure people uh, have uh, the opportunity to get wherever they need to get, whether it's to the library, to their doctor's appointments, to their job. Um, and so we have uh, committed 22% of the penny uh, toward the comment, and we have worked closely with staff to ensure that not only would we be able to maintain current comment service, but to be able to expand in key locations uh, services there. Uh, to deliver uh, world-class jobs, um, we need a world-class new transit center, and that is something that has been programmed in. Um, no details on that, but it's something that we have to look at as a county uh, as we grow. And that's not just for our, our public bus system, but to take into account uh, light rail, uh, future light rail, um, private bus, and also uh, the likes of those. Okay, so we just got a couple more, and I'm keeping my eye on the time, but I'm gonna try to squeeze these in. Have there been problems with waste, fraud, or abuse of the penny tax? And how does the penny tax support new business development? So two questions there. First, addressing any waste, fraud, or abuse of the penny. And then secondly, how does the penny tax support new business development? Um, there was uh, uh, no, uh, no findings were had um, in a long, uh, lawsuit um, between Richland County um, and the South Carolina Department of Revenue. Uh, but what did come out of that were some clarifying principles um, about the use of the penny, uh, because previous to that, there were just not, they just didn't exist for any county, uh, much less Richland County. Uh, so just addressing that right off the bat. And then in terms of the penny, uh, expanding opportunity for jobs and for growth in this county. Um, just think about the, um, the employers that have been able to set up here. Um, we have roads ready to go for them to transport in uh, raw materials and come out with uh, goods to be delivered to people. Um, we have uh, the opportunity for people to uh, make Richland County their home and find good jobs here um, and travel safely to work, whether that's on our local roads or through the Comet. So yes, um, the, the Penny absolutely will support uh, growth both uh, in the county and as terms of economic development. As a citizen of Richland County, there's not a doubt in my mind that the current Penny and our future Penny are going to be used in a responsible and transparent manner. Um, the Supreme Court and the Department of Revenue put guidelines in place for every penny program in this state. And I think uh, Richland County's penny program is a shining star and, uh, and the example that, that is being used all over this state when it comes to penny programs. You've got a lot of counties 
that have uh, penny programs on their ballot, Greenville, Sumter, Charleston, but I think Richland County does a great job. Can you talk more on greenways? Lots of projects from 2012 aren't done. How can we make sure this happens? Thank you. I know a lot of folks are excited about the greenways, and I know how popular they are because once they are built, um, the neighbors who live around uh, use them all the time. They are taking their kids out for walks. They are taking their pets out for walks. Um, the environment around the greenways expand. Uh, people set up restaurants and uh, people want to build their homes and live there. Um, I love our advocates for the greenways and want to make sure that uh, we can boldly go forward and say, uh, and say what well, this is what we are doing because we've seen what greenways do in other communities, we definitely want to see more of that. Yeah, absolutely. We, ha we have gaps in our Three Rivers Greenway that need to be connected. We're eventually going to have 27 miles of connectivity from the Lake Murray Dam all the way to Granby Park on both sides of the river. Our partners in West Columbia and Casey, Lexington County, we're doing amazing things when it comes to creating this, this local greenway. You see other municipalities and counties boast about uh, what they have especially a, a county up north that I'm tired of hearing about. <laughs> but we're, we're going we're gonna to outshine everybody when we finish that. And there are gaps. So the gap on the Con Congaree River, like I said, on William Street, the, the Columbia Gateway, future Columbia Gateway Park, um, that is an important one. And then expanding down through our, our friends in the Mill Village uh, through Granby Park. And then connectivity into, into our downtown neighborhoods is very important as well. Um, the, there's a connectivity points over the Elmwood flyover bridge. The Elmwood flyover bridge is going to be in DOT design here soon and we asked, hey, can you put in a greenway connectivity point there as well? That's another example of leveraging the penny tax to, to uh, boost a infrastructure project that helps everybody. And I believe we share a vision around you know folks getting up in their neighborhoods maybe it's a weekend morning they you know get on their bike or get uh get out the stroller and uh walk for a while and end up in one of our neighborhood coffee shops and then spend a little time and see people maybe you know there's some entertainment around and then folks get home in the afternoon and you know and have some rest so I think there's a vision for how, for the quality of life that we can have right here in Richland County. All right, well that concludes our Q&A portion of the program. Councilwoman Teresio, Councilman Brennan, Director Maloney, thank you so much. Now I'm gonna turn it back over to the council members for closing remarks. Thank you, I won't keep much, uh, you here much longer. I just wanna say thank you for your time, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your input. Uh, you've been giving, many of you have been giving us input all along and we want you to keep, keep it up. Thank you. Spread the word, richlandpenny.com. So it has wonderful information. Uh, it, it is our penny and we need to keep it our penny as we move forward. The, the importance of, of the penny on our general quality of life right now and moving forward, uh, I, can't, I can't speak to it enough. Um, when it comes to our transit system, we can't go backwards in our transit system at all. We need to go forward. We are turning into a world-class little economy here that needs to deliver folks to jobs, to their health care appointments, um, to our hospitality districts. And then you look at, at the ultimate community uh, enrichment investment. we got to keep up with our crumbling infrastructure. And I see this as the best path forward. So I, I hope you do your research. Please tell your neighbors, if they have any questions, reach out to me. Uh, I see many community leaders in here. Please put the information out there. You have our info. Reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all. Thank you to the staff that put this together. Thank you to Middle School for hosting us. Um, have a great night. Thank you.